Welcome to Sculpture Studios, where today's project video is creating a stage prop for a band's 2019 Europe tour. We've created sculpture for bands like Iron Maiden, Status Quo and Pink Floyd in the past, but here today we have a little something special for someone new. The heavy metal rock band Dragon Force have reached out to have someone take this metallic dragon as part of their Extreme Power Metal album cover and bring it into the third dimension. Naturally, polystyrene carving is right up our street and exactly what the project called for, and even though we only had a relatively short deadline for this, we said this was definitely something that we could create. Here we are, just about to grid up for the um, large dragon head with Jessica. Yeah. This is uh, what we're gridding up, and it's going to be about two metres tall top to bottom and it's to go on stage behind the drummer we believe uh, and that's the concept image we have to adapt it a bit just so, so it's not so wide and not so deep so that it's more manageable on stage so yeah so this is the preliminary work just so we can get a rough, rough profile of the front and the sides so see how it progresses from here our client for this sculpture is Bex Lowe an independent prop maker and an employee of Merlin. Now, I don't mean some sort of sorcerer's apprentice, that's Merlin Entertainment, and not the fabled wizard the company is no doubt named after, but on this occasion, we're solely working for Bex as one of her own privately commissioned projects. Bex is actually going to be tackling the fiberglass element of the job, we're going to be providing the polystyrene master carving, and Bex is going to be taking it from there. Later in the process, we'll invite the client down to the studio to take a look at the carving in person and to iron out any problems or areas that need changing. With the polystyrene carving, we need to do everything we can to ensure the fiberglass process can go as smooth as possible later. Our 8x4x2 by by foot billets of polystyrene have been hot wire cut down to size and the detachable spike elements have been carved to be added when we get further into the process. Now, as well as client meetings, we do get random visitors to the studio from time to time. And here, acting like he's talking about something really in-depth, is Aiden's elder brother. Let's face it, we all know why he's here. <laughs> Alright, you've been in the next video. <laughs> and just like that, John, you've made it onto the channel. Jess is now going round and marking out all the main curves and features on the dragon shape. It's important to keep referring back to the concept image so that we don't deviate too far from the band's design. Handheld hot wires are used to take off the bulk of the material, steadily working down to nail and wire brushes. We know that the majority of our viewers, and our subscribers especially, love a bit of the carving process and those that say, yeah, why don't you just get this 3D cut or 3D printed, either haven't crafted something like this by hand before, or, even if they did, obviously didn't get the same joy out of it as we do. Not only does a computerised model of this dragon not exist in the first place, so you would need to have the time and the cost for someone to create that for you, but from our experience, you would also need about triple the time and triple the cost to have this 3D cut. Here, we can keep everything in-house, in control, and in time and budget for the client. Carving for Aiden especially, is one of the main reasons that he pursued being a sculptor as a chosen career. Now that the main shape has been blocked out, Aiden and Jess are comparing notes and going through any amendments that might need to be made. So this is as far as I got with the carving, just getting the main blocky shape out. The only bits we ended up changing was this bit on the front of the nose, uh, simply because we didn't, draw it. <laughs> we didn't draw it on here and this is really rounded whereas if you start looking at the actual drawings he's got a bit more of a dome on his nose so we've created a bit more of that from the side and um, we've also made his jaw wider here and here that will need to come back to there just so it looks a little bit more like that it's quite rounded there uh, and also, here it's much wider.
quarter to 11 o'clock of an evening. I've stayed on at work while everyone else goes home. It's nice and quiet, no radio, no telephone calls. Um, just to see if I can sort of block in this quickly and um, see if it's taking shape. Uh, front view, see if there's some kind of symmetry happening here. Making sure the eyes are facing forward as if it's a predator and trying to really get that, that about to strike look about it, it rearing back and then trying to go forward. And also trying to keep this kind of mechanical sort of uh, facets along here as well as, as a bit of organic on the snake itself. And still trying to keep true to the images. That's it there. I believe they're going to try and make the eyes light up and some fire or some steam or something come out through there with a nice um, metallic finish. That's the whole idea of it anyway. And that's the rough concept. And then we're going to get loads of big spikes in here. But for the, for the moment, I'm going to leave all these spikes just out of the way so we can get in and carve it and get the general form. So I think I'll work on until about half past 11, see if I can get ahead and, and see if there's any problems with it. But I think it's taking shape so far. Putting on the final spikes. Let's just go back a little bit, see what we've got. Looks a lot more interesting now with all the thorns on it. Yeah, I think there's um, some layers into the eyes and around the cheekbones up here, which is best done afterwards because if you better fixing on these details, this little bit here and down here and all across the cheekbones need to be done afterwards, I think. And also I think you need to cut the horns off and number them, do the rest of it and then stick the horns back on. Is that otherwise it's going to be really difficult to do the whole job in one section. So a few more horns to go on the very top. Should look good, finish it off. Go on Aidan, get in there. Here we are. All ready for collection for tomorrow. Yeah. A few little bits here to trim off. That's just where we filled in all the small little holes. We made the whole of the uh, snout come away so that she can get in and do the tongue and the interior of the mouth. This works out to be beneficial both for Bex's fiberglassing needs to get inside uh, as well as for transportation as it yeah. means she can save money on a, a smaller van as yeah. the snout comes off and Just should fit snugly. Inside a transit van. Yeah. In 
Inviting the client to the studio, meeting for the first time, and having them see the work properly for the first time is always a beneficial step for us. Naturally, the project can be talked through far easier in person, but what's most important, apart from the sculpture side of things, is that we can get a proper sense for our client and they can get a proper feel for us too. What makes things run smoothly and opens opportunities for more work is a good working relationship. Bex can look around the studio, be judged on what sort of biscuits that she decides to bring down with her. Even more judgement if no biscuits are chosen at all, and gotta be honest Bex, I can't remember what biscuits you brought down with you. But hopefully be inspired to commission more work with us in the future. Talking through the next stages of the project here, in regards to the fiberglass work, Bex has had loads of prior hands-on experience with this sort of project. She understands the process and any complications, and it's important that we've helped to make that go as problem-free as possible. We obviously create sculpture for a variety of events, companies and locations, particularly around the UK, and each and every project is different. Some jobs involve production runs in glass fibre, with multiple casting and silicon moulds. Other projects involve a lot of metalwork or more architectural designs, but we all know that it's the carving element and a bit of polystyrene work that Aidan loves in the workshop, so this is a welcome project to come into the studio. Working on stage props, theme park scenery and larger than life theming is always something Aidan's enjoyed, so who knows, perhaps we can work with Bex again or Merlin themselves sometime in the future. Here we can see the dragon after its fiberglass layer, worked up to an audience level finish and scenically painted, and let's hope that that breath isn't too hot on the back of the drummer's neck. A big thanks must go to Bex Lowe for coming to us with the project, and of course to the band Dragon Force, we really hope the tour went well for you, and that this dragon was a welcome addition on stage. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter. And for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.